Grace, mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today we are meditating on Mark chapter 9. And this is a very interesting Bible reading. I will uh, go over just a little bit and then we will meditate on these minutes. And Nicole, if you can put the uh, Bible reading on the screens as well. Mark 9, 14 to 29. And when they came back to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and some scribes arguing with them. Immediately, when the entire crowd saw him, they were amazed and began, began running up to greet him. And he asked them, What are you disputing with them? And one person from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought you my son, because he has a spirit that makes him unable to speak. And whenever it says him, it slams him to the ground. And he foams at the mouth and grins his teeth and becomes stiff. And I told your disciples so that they would cast it out, but they could not do it. And he answered them and said, O unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When he saw him, the spirit immediately threw him into convulsions and fell into the ground. He began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, How long has, been, has this been happening to him? And he said, From ch childhood. It has often threw him both into the fire and into the water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Do you hear what the Father says? If you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Did the Father ask Jesus Christ for help only for his children or his child? No. The Father says, if you can do anything, take pity on us. On us. Not only help him on us and help us. But Jesus said to him, if you can't, all things are possible for the one who believes. Immediately the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe. In Greek here, this is what the father says. Or how, what happens? Listen. Immediately the boy's father cried out and said with tears. The father was suffering with tears in his face. And with tears in his face, he said, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Where is the problem, in the kid or in the father? I do believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. And after crying out and throwing him into terrible convulsions, it came out. And the boy became so much like a corpus that most of them say, He is deaf. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him, and he got up. When he came into the house, his disciples began asking him privately, Why is it that we could not cast it out? And he said, Jesus said to them, This kind cannot come out by anything except prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, 
this reading is about faith. This Bible reading is about the power of Christ to cast out demons. This Bible reading that we just hear is about the power of Christ to cast out evil spirits. But the Bible reading is about faith. And unfortunately, during these times, it's a lot of misconception regarding what is faith? What's going on with faith? Do you ever hear people saying to somebody else when somebody else is struggling, you just must to be, you just must to believe. You just believe. Wrong. This is wrong. This is dangerous. This is terrible. You as Christian never tell another Christian, you just believe. You just, you, you must have faith. Why? Because if you understood what is faith, faith is a gift of God. You cannot create faith on your own. You cannot produce faith on your own. Faith comes from outside of you. Faith comes from outside of you. Faith comes through the word of God. Faith comes when you have an encounter with Jesus Christ. When you read the word, when you hear the word of God, when you are exposed to the word of God is when faith is working through the Holy Spirit. And prayer, again, when we hear, when people pray, or when we hear about this uh, father, he prays and he says, help my unbelief. But in order for him to say, help my unbelief, is because he is already putting his trust in who? In Jesus Christ. Who is in the front of him? Jesus Christ. What is this teaching you and me? Well, prayer is the result of faith. And faith comes only through the proclamation of Jesus Christ. Faith comes only through the hearing of the word of God, which is what is being happening in this Bible reading. Prayer is the response of faith. And prayer is a mark of faith in God. And we all know Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. Hebrews 11, 6 also says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You hear that? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Even if you behave well, even if you think that you don't need to go to church because you behave well, even if you are the person who says, well, I don't kill, I don't steal, I don't have to go to church because I behave well. Well, according to the Bible in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, it's very important to know that faith, again, is something, and I'm insisting on in this because unfortunately you can see people don't get in it, don't see in the faith, the gift of faith. Faith is something that comes from outside of you. Faith is not in you. Faith comes from outside of you. The Bible states that faith, again, is a uh, gift of God. And what is, what is this? Why I'm saying this? Because you cannot pray to God if you don't believe in Him. You cannot. 
You cannot ask God to heal you if you don't believe that he can heal you. Did you see the Father? I believe. Help me in my unbelief. He already has faith because Jesus Christ in the front of him. You cannot ask God for help if you don't believe that he can help you. That is why a non-believer, someone who is not a Christian, cannot pray. Of course, if you say, well, repeat these words with me, and let's, let's pray, maybe they will do it, right? But a non-believer, someone who is not a Christian, cannot pray because they don't believe he exists. For a person to believe that Jesus Christ exists first, before anything else, they must have faith. And to have faith, it is imperative to have an encounter with the Word made flesh. And his name is Jesus Christ. It is imperative to have an encounter with the author and finisher of faith. And his name is and that is precisely what happens in this uh, biblical text. When Jesus Christ heals this boy from that demon. Jesus Christ cast out the demon that was in that boy. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the only one who can expel evil spirits from your life. Do you agree with me on that? He is the only one. Jesus Christ is the only one who can expel his evil spirits from your life. Yes, Jesus Christ is the only one who can carry out an exorcism. And by the way, do you know what happens when we baptize? When we baptize children or adults, basically, it's, it's an exorcism. You don't hear it. We don't, we don't, the pastor don't say that. We are about to cast out of demons. But what happens is Jesus Christ put his Holy Spirit on that baby, on that adult. It's quite the necessity to baptize children as well. And guys, you didn't know, every time you come to church and you, your ears hear the word of God, God is spilling evil spirits from your life. Do you know that? Do you know that that happens when you come to church as well? It's why the necessity to come to church. It's why you need to come to church. It's why you should bring your friends and family members and your husband and your kids who doesn't behave well. Bring them to church. Because the pastor is not going to tell you Today, we are going to cast demons. But during the worship, Jesus Christ does that. It's why we need to hear and expose people to the word of God. It's why we need to preach regarding the Bible verses. Because every time that you come to church and your ears hear the word of God, God is expelling evil spirits from your life and the life of your children. That is why church is extremely important. Parents, that is why church is extremely important. That is why it is important that you come to church. How can I explain it better? That is why it is imperative that you come to church. That is why it is important that you bring your children to church. Dear brothers and sisters, again, the main topic of this Bible reading is not the illness or the possessed son. The main topic in this Bible reading is the faith of the father. This man has spent his life suffering along his son. Did that sound familiar to you? 
if you are a father and your children been struggling with you in any area in your life, it's not only your children, your son or your daughter, you are also struggling. You suffer alongside with them. And this man has spent his life suffering alongside his son. And after so many years, this man has an encounter with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ wants to heal that man's heart. Jesus Christ, by first, if you read the Bible reading, if you hear that, by first freeing the Father from the spirit of unbelief. I don't know if you get what I just said. Of course, we see how Jesus Christ expelled the demon, right? But before Jesus Christ did that, Jesus Christ expelled the spirit of unbelief from the Father. That is powerful. That is extremely powerful. Because Jesus Christ wants to teach you something to you and to me. The major problem in the life of every human being is the spirit of unbelief. It's why we need to proclaim God's word. It's why we need to preach the gospel. It's why we need to preach uh, Jesus Christ crucified. Jesus Christ, again, by first freeing the Father from the spirit of unbelief, then, just with one word, frees the boy from the evil spirit. Again, see, we are not going to emphasize too much in how he spelled uh, the uh, demon or the spirit or the bad spirit. Jesus Christ first frees the Father, and then he frees the Son. Do you see it? Now, even though what type of uh, spirit was or what type of uh, demon was, it was a mute and deaf spirit, right? So what is that teaching you and me? Even though them demons who are deaf and mute what does that mean if he, the demon is deaf? He cannot hear. Even though every time Jesus Christ speaks, even mute spirits hear. Can you see it? Why? Because no one can resist the word of God. No one can resist the word of Jesus Christ. No one. No one. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Because Jesus Christ is God himself. Because Jesus Christ is the only one who can give you the gift of faith. Because Jesus Christ is the only one, dear brothers and sisters, who can free you from evil spirits. He is the one. Jesus Christ is the answer and is why you come to church. Yes, Jesus Christ is the answer to your life. Yes, I can boldly say that Jesus Christ is the, uh, the answer of all the situations in your life. Yes, yes, He is the answer because He has a solution for your life and also He has a solution for your death. Dear brothers and sisters, in Jesus Christ, there is freedom. In Jesus Christ, there is salvation. In Jesus Christ, there is deliverance. In Jesus Christ, dear brothers and sisters, you can start a new life. Free from the chains of the devil. Free from the chains of any afflictions. Free from depression. Free from your addictions. Yes, he can help you and he can fix you. And during the time of worship, 
God deals with you. It's why you come to church. It's why you come to church Sunday. Because during the time of worship, when we sing the songs, when we worship the Lord, God deals with you. During the time of confession and absolution, God cleanses you. God forgives you. Yes, during the time of Holy Communion, God comes to you. During the time of prayer, God listens to you. During the final blessing, God goes with you. Can you see it? That is why every time you come to church, God can and want to start a new life with you. And today is the day. Today can be the first day of your best life in Christ. Because if we read the Bible reading, verse 27 says, After Jesus Christ freed the Father, he frees the Son. And after freeing the Son, what is Jesus Christ doing? The Bible says that Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and the boy stood up. What is that teaching you and me? Well, when evil spirits come into your life, they throw you to the ground. But when Jesus Christ comes into your life, he lifts you up. He lifts you up. He grabs you by your hand and lifts you up. Amen.